All right, conic sections. So the topic of chapter 11 is conic sections. And if you haven't looked at it this way before, or haven't seen it presented this way before, it can seem kind of strange because what we're doing is we're looking at, um, well, we're looking at conic sections, uh, which are, hold on, I'm still waiting for the, wash the board off to evaporate a little bit. But if you take two, um, these cones are supposed to go on forever, forever. So these are two cones and they're connected or they have this one point in common. And what we do is we take cross sections and we look at the cross sections, study those, and those are called conic sections. I mean, that's why they're called conic sections. So for example, uh, maybe the easiest one to visualize is if you took, and we're slicing it with a plane. So if I sliced it with a plane like this, what you would get here is a circle. <clears throat> so a circle is a conic section. Um, if you tilt this plane, uh, I think you could well imagine that if you tilted this plane, um, uh, let's see, that what you would get is this uh, oval shaped thing, uh, which we call, it's a very specific oval shape, not any oval shape, and it's called an ellipse. Um, but these are the things that we're about to study. So these are really sort of the animals in the zoo. And there's the straight line, because if I slice it right along the edge, you're going to get a straight line. And not in any particular order, but there's the straight line, circle, ellipse, our old friend, the parabola, um, and the hyperbola. So those are the creatures in the zoo. And we're going to start off with circle, uh, which I think most people feel fairly, uh, fairly familiar with. Uh, but before we do that, um, I want to reestablish two things. And you'll notice this is done in Chapter 11. And that's the distance formula and the midpoint formula. And let's just say you forgot the distance formula. <coughs> I doubt you forgot the Pythagorean theorem. I bet that the Pythagorean theorem is stuck in your mind. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The distance formula is the Pythagorean theorem, just slightly in disguise. Remember, if you do this, and let's say you take a point here, and you know I'll, I'll use specific numbers right now. Uh, let's say this is the point one comma two. And over here, let's say this is the point uh, 4, 11. And I'm not trying to make this a scale in any way, but we wanted to find the distance between these two. The most basic idea would be to draw a triangle like this, a right triangle, and then just figure out this distance and this distance, and then use the Pythagorean theorem. And that would give you the distance between the two points, D. Now, if this really was a piece of graph paper, what, I'm about, what I was about to ask you would be so easy, it would be ridiculous. Um, that's one block over. That's four blocks over. If you go from one to four, you went three blocks over. That's two up. That's 11 up. Doesn't really look like it. But if I had a real piece of scrap paper and I really was plotting this, it would be you know 11 blocks up. If you go from 2 to 11, how far did you go up? Well, 9. So the Pythagorean theorem would have us say that d squared is equal to 3 squared plus 9 squared. And then, you know, d squared is equal to 9 plus 81, so 90. The square root both sides, and so the distance is square root of 90. But, you know, if you want a formula, where did you get this 3 from? Well, it's 4 minus 1. And where did you get this 9 from? It's 11 minus 2. And now what we want to do really is, you know, swap all this out with generic points. Let's say this is the point x sub 1, y sub 1. And this is the point x sub 2, y sub 2. You know, it could be any two points. And you want to find the distance between them, well, you would draw the same, you know, right triangle. And this would be x sub 2 minus x sub 1. 
And this here would be y sub 2 minus y sub 1. And the distance would be given by the Pythagorean theorem. So x sub 1 minus x sub 2 squared plus y sub 1 minus y sub 2 squared. And you square both sides. And you get the famous, I suppose famous, uh, distance formula. Uh, should you know the distance formula off the top of your head? The, the answer is honestly you should. Yeah, this is one of the very few things I say is absolutely worth memorizing. Um, how you memorize it, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I tend to think of it as it's the sum of the squares of the differences and the coordinates, and then you square root the whole thing. I mean, however, you know, it goes to your mind to remember this as up to you. But there's a distance formula. What it means is anytime, anywhere, we can find the distance between two points. And since we're going to need it, maybe not in this video, but you're going to need it, that there's something called the midpoint formula, which sure enough gives us the point that's midway between two points. So let me just go ahead and state that. And what we have is the, the midpoint, let me call it M. Okay, so we have two points. Here's two generic, here's one, X sub 1, Y sub 1, right there. And I'm going to write a little bit bigger. And up here, here's another point. Let's say x sub 2, uh, y sub 2. And you want to find the point midway between those two points. <coughs> There's a formula that says that this is x sub 1 plus x sub 2 divided by 2. And y sub 1 plus y sub 2 divided by 2. Um, one, one way you can look at this is the average of the x-coordinates and the average of the y-coordinates. And, well, the average, uh, there's all kinds of averages, but the mean, okay? Um, and here's a good exercise. I suggest you try it. I'm not going to do it right now, but it's, it's, it falls in this category when I think of things that everyone should do once, but there would never be a reason to do it twice. It's sort of a once-in-your-lifetime thing. And that is to check this distance with the distance formula and this distance with the distance formula and make sure it equals the entire distance. And let me set that up and then I'll, I'll leave it to you to give it a try. The whole distance here, let's say capital D, is given by the distance formula. And that's the square root of uh, x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. And as opposed to, let me put a question mark here. I mean, it, it does, you know, but you need to show that that equals d sub 1, which is the square root of uh, um, x sub 1 minus x sub 1 plus x sub 2 divided by 2, all squared plus uh, y sub 1. Oh, where am I? d sub 1 here. So y sub 1, you subtract the two coordinates, uh, minus y sub 1 plus y sub 2 divided by 2 squared plus, because that's d sub 1, plus the square root of um, uh, x sub 2 minus x sub 1 plus x sub 2 divided by 2 squared plus x sub y sub 2 minus y sub 1 plus y sub 2 divided by 2 squared. So, you know, we write the distance formula down with uh, abandon, and, you know, it looks pretty good. It, it is correct. And it looks good, you know, feels good, blah, blah, blah. But to prove that it really works, um, actually, this is not the only thing you have to do. Sorry, you have to do this, and then you have to show that this equals this. Because it's not a matter of just the sum of these two lengths equals the whole length, but they're supposed to equal each other. So, um, you know, if, honestly, if we were in class, I probably would probably would do this. But on a video, eh, I'm not sure it's really a good idea. So I'll pass on that. So we've got the distance and the midpoint formula. Now, up and onwards, the circle. Again, I'm going to attack the circle first. Well, we've already discussed straight lines. I think we've kind of done those. Uh, so the circle is something most people feel familiar with. And what is a circle? It's a set of all points equidistant from a given point. Now, you know, what does that mean? It means you're given a point, and that's the center of the circle. 
and then you're given a distance and I guess I'll call it R because it will be the radius of the circle and the circle is a set of all points that are the same distance equi equal equi distant from the given point now if I put this on a coordinate system as follows uh, there's a possibility of getting an equation out of this but um, maybe that'll be a little bit um, unpleasant at first if I use a circle like this so instead let me pick a very specific circle and a much easier circle to deal with um, and then we'll you know we'll generalize it to this situation here so let's suppose that um, keep things uh, not too crazy let's suppose we give the uh, center of the circle is one comma two it's a pretty nice point you know one comma two and let's suppose that the radius is um, seven so what is the equation of this particular circle well the idea is here's some generic point x comma y and what do we know well we know that the distance is equal to remember that the, that's the distance between this point and this point is equal to 1 minus x squared hey 1 minus x squared x minus 1 squared it's the same thing so you can write it however you want uh, tell you what let me I think I, you'll see it this written this way in the textbook so let me write it like that and then y minus 2 squared now that's the equation of that circle but it's not a very pleasant form of the equation and what makes it not very nice is this um, square root so let's square both sides and let's flip things around because that's normally the way you're going to see it instead of 49 let me write it like 7 squared and now take a look at this equation and see where all the numbers came from um the one and the two are the center of the circle and this is the radius squared so if I replace this with let's say you know any old point a b and any old radius then what do we have we have this we have x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared and that's the equation of any circle where a and b are the center of the circle and r is the radius of the circle and uh well let me go ahead and do a problem now you see what i did right here is a one-time only thing it's really a derivation but it's a one-time only thing you're, you're not going to be doing that again but what you will be doing most enjoyably <laughs> um, is, is for example if you have this let's say uh, is to make a graph of this circle now when someone says make a graph what does that mean or what does that entail um it's a good question um definitely in the case of conic sections is you want to state what kind of conic section it is i mean is that is that an ellipse is it a hyperbola is it a parabola is it a straight line well this is a circle so you should say this is a circle and like any good circle you should say what the center and the radius of the circle what the center and the radius of the circle are and you should tell us what the intercepts are because you should always tell us what the intercepts are so what's the center we just read it right off here it's five comma one not much to be done what's the radius it's the square root of that right. we can make a rough graph no problems one two three four five up one there's the center right there the radius is six so we can go uh one thing you could do is you just go up six one two three four five six 
One, two, three, four, five, six down here. Over here, six. Over here, six. You can get a halfway decent graph. I should label it. Here's the point five comma one. It might be nice to label these points because, well, you'll see why when we do ellipses. But uh, what is this point right here? This is the point five comma because we went up six, starting at one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we went down. So this would be point five comma negative five. And then over here we went over this way six. So this would be eleven comma one. Yeah, I don't mean that to be on the x-axis. So let me put it up here. And over here, this would be the point we, we come back six this way, so negative one, comma one. It's a pretty good graph, except we have to find the intercept. So how do we find the intercepts? Well, how do you find the x-intercept? You set y equal to zero. So x minus five squared plus, and we solve for x. So let's go ahead and solve for x. We know how to do that. X minus five, let's take care of these numbers first. That's one, subtract one from both sides, square root both sides. Uh, that's there's two solutions, but look at the picture. There are two x-intercepts. So uh, this is the one to the right. So this one right here, here let me write it up here, is um, five plus the square root of thirty-five, comma zero. And then this one here, I think, is more or less obviously five minus the square root of thirty-five, comma zero. And you would do the y-intercept similarly. Just set x equal to zero and solve for y. Uh, so that's mostly it for circles, with one exception, and I'll deal with the one exception in the next video. So remember, um, you should be studying and working practice problems from Chapter 11. Uh, again, very important chapter if you're going to study math moving forward.